Welcome back to the Weather Center, folks. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your Tuesday afternoon or evening, whenever it is you're able to tune in. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your Tuesday to join me here in the Weather Center for another tropical update. We've got some new up and comings both in the tropical Pacific and on the Atlantic side of things to cover today. So before we get started, please consider clicking subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. Let's tickle that algorithm just a little bit by giving the like button a little nudge if you could. I always need a little nudge to get this information front and center to you all to get YouTube to like these videos itself and push it out to your recommendations here on the YouTube platform. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns upon the conclusion of this video update, please drop them in the comments section down below. I'll get back to you at my earliest convenience, and I promise you that. With that being said, let's go ahead and rock into this. So this is National Hurricane Center's homepage. We're starting out in the Eastern Pacific because Invest 90E is still making headlines out there. I'll go ahead and get my head out of the way so you can take a look at the narrative down here. Satellite imagery shows showers and thunderstorms becoming better organized. However, disclaimer, I'll show you the satellite. It isn't looking too impressive. It was looking a lot healthier yesterday evening during our strugglesome live stream. It has since lost a little bit of its thunderstorm activity closest to that center of low pressure. However, you look at the formation chances and we are maxed out 100% chance in the next two days with a 100% chance over the next seven days. So it is fairly likely we will have tropical depression number one in the East Pack. If not, Tropical Storm Alvin entering the fray very soon. Here's a look at the true color visible satellite shot, and you can see this is kind of harkening back to both the beginnings of Debbie last hurricane season as well as Ernesto while it was still east of the Leeward Islands and the Greater Antilles before hooking back towards the north headed for Bermuda as a hurricane. It is a very, very broad area of low pressure. It does look like there could potentially be even some dry air wrapping in around the northwest side into that center because if you look closely, yesterday when the satellite loop got started, it was definitely looking a lot more robust. You can see the overnight hours progressing through in that infrared shot. And then finally, when the true color returns with the return of the sunshine, there's your center at the very end of the loop looking a little exposed, a little worse for wear. But regardless, if you take a look at the track density, this thing is expected to stay on a west-northwest path, eventually arcing back towards the north as a long wave trough begins to dig across the four corners, the desert southwest of the Rocky Mountain region before exiting over the Great Plains, likely sparking more severe weather up there. We'll talk about that in a future live stream, but this will likely run ashore somewhere between the Baja Peninsula up there, the Baja California Peninsula, or the extreme western shoreline of Upper Mexico, and it will be weakening at that point. Thankfully, we have some cooler water temperatures up there. It is in a warm pocket right now. Surprisingly, it hasn't fully taken advantage of the anti-cyclone overhead, but that is good news for our folks up there. The less this thing can intensify, the better, especially as their hurricane season gets underway. But now, I'll take you full screen again. This is hot off the press from Climate Prediction Center, and just as we were expecting, I think we mentioned this in a live stream yesterday or in my update video on Sunday. Not too much happening between the June 4th and June 10th time frame in our neck of the woods. You can see the East Pack bullseyed for those elevated chances that we see something try to develop in terms of tropical action. But then here you go, June 11th through June 17th. We've got that famous hatched region for the Western Caribbean and the Bay of Campeche surrounding northern Central America, eastern Mexico, and the Yucatan Peninsula. This is precisely where it is we've been watching, and I'm kind of surprised they only went with that small geographic region for potential development. I think this could be expanded a little further into the Central Caribbean, even getting closer to the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, and especially the southern base of the Caribbean, right around where Panama and Costa Rica is. Is, given what our models are showing, let's get into some of those right now. So taking a look at our 12Z European model, the ensembles, I should say, kind of a bit of a downtrend. I'm not going to lie to you. It looks like the model is indeed picking up on a very dominant Central American gyre. If you look at the way the ensemble spread out here, you can see it wrapped up in that very broad area of low pressure. Now, remember, the Central American gyre is a large region of lowering pressures because you have rising motions overhead, a disruption in our easterly wind flow that is trademark for the Central America and Southern Mexico region. And in this case, 
case, it actually shows a lot of the ensembles rotating around where that low pressure could be down towards the low to mid levels of the environment, suggesting we have a pretty dominant anti-cyclone, an upper level ridge overhead providing that difluent flow, which is very interesting. Even the operational GFS, I won't show that here for the sake of time, they've had that showing up earlier on the 12Z model run where something developed down in the southern Caribbean moved up through the Yucatan Channel and then dipped back towards the west before almost stalling out thanks to a relaxing in the steering pattern. Now, the GEFS shows a very different picture. You look at here, and we have a fairly coherent signal. We have bumped it forward just a little bit as well. I do think that the early signal was perhaps the models trying to gravitate towards that tropical wave that's currently moving through the MDR right now. It's going to scrape across the Guianas, upper portions of Venezuela, the ABC Islands, before entering the Southern Caribbean. It looks like right now, because of the digging trough I'd mentioned, is going to pull currently 90E towards the north, the wind shear and the dry air coming off the continental U.S. might just be a little too much for this thing to try to consolidate. It's shortly after that when we get the main phase of the MJO to come across where we could see things get a little more interesting. You take a look at the control member of the GEFS. These are all of the ensemble members brought together to show what the most likely outcome could be. Again, could be. We're going way out into the future. That's why we're relying only on ensembles. You'll notice I'm not really going to pull up an operational model here. You can see a broad gyre beginning to build up, lifting towards the north, tries to intensify in the eastern gulf before you can see. Not going to say it out loud, but we have been talking about the eastern and central gulf, the southeastern United States, possibly the deep south being an area we'll have to continue to monitor. The GFS and its associated ensembles are reflecting this. The European model is being very wishy-washy. I'll show you why I think that is. First and foremost, here's a look at your divergent winds where the MJO is likely to establish itself. We've kind of moved the timestamp just a little bit out ahead. We're still within that date and time frame we'd been discussing several updates ago, June 4th to about June 15th, give or take. And if you look right here, 0Z, late in the evening, Sunday, June 8th into June 9th, Monday morning, you can see here we have a very, very dominant signal, a very robust MJO pulse, kind of borrowing energy from both areas, or I should say sharing energies from both basins, the Western Atlantic, Gulf Caribbean, and the Eastern Pacific. The GEFS, on the other hand, has that that same reflection, but it is biased a bit further towards the east, which could potentially be why it is the GFS is showing formation in our side of the spectrum, whereas the European model wants the thing to kind of hug Central America and possibly crash back towards the west into the Bay of Campeche, a la Alberto and Chris from last hurricane season. This is the tricky nature of the gyre. We're going to just have to keep watching it at this point. This here is what I think is possibly going to dork up our pattern as well. We've had huge fluctuations in the Pacific North American oscillation. Remember, the positive phase would suggest dominant ridging out west. This would be trademark or symbolic of the monsoon setup that's currently occurring for the occurring for the Four Corners area out west. Their monsoon season has likely started to get underway and a trough extending back over the east. You flip that upside down into a negative pattern as you can see suggested for the first week of June before we retrograde back up into potentially either a neutral if not a weak positive phase. That would mean that area of ridging has now moved out towards the east with troughing extending over the Rockies. The models have been extremely back and forth with this. You look at the GFS ensemble and it actually shows an even stronger negative phase of the PNA beginning for us somewhere between June 1st and June 2nd before we start to balloon back up right around the 8th to the 9th. This is going to be pivotal. If that Central American gyre vorticity signal, that area of spin, decides to lift up out of there and gets embedded within the MJO as it moves across, that could be the key as to whether or not this thing crashes and burns in Central America or arrives into Mexico as a rainmaker or tries to lift towards the north as something a bit more consolidated. Here's a look at the GEFS trends here. This is going to be your forecast trends. I know it's looping very quickly, but I want you to look at what happens over the central and eastern United States, the westernmost Atlantic. Notice that as we go forward in time from about six model runs ago to now, we are slowly starting to trend towards that reinforcing omega block pattern with ridging jutting up through the central United States up towards the Great Lakes and 
a bit of a return to troughing right up against the East Coast. We're going to have to watch this. This is six model runs consecutively overlaid back to back in this GIF. If that trough kind of hugs the west coast of the Pacific shoreline out there, the pack northwest through Nevada and California here, that could allow our ridge to intensify in amplitude over the Great Plains, driving their severe weather risk up as that trough tries to come out off the front range of the Rockies. But then in turn, that also reinforces the fact that we could have lower pressures and troughing still in place over the east coast. So we're going to have to watch that very closely. Last but certainly not least, you can see here looking at our ensembles, the MJO is going to come into that optimal phase for Atlantic favored activity, at least tropical rain shower and thunderstorm activity. We're not labeling a tropical cyclone this early, this prematurely. We still have a lot of things that can go wrong clearly, and our models are showing that. Ensembles are still all over the place, and we still have approximately 10, if not a full two weeks ahead of us to continue to dial this in. So I would highly encourage if you haven't done so already, make sure you click that subscribe button, share this information with friends and family alike, and anyone you know who could possibly benefit from it, drop a comment down below in the comment section. I will get back to you at my earliest convenience. I always make it a point to. I love chatting with everybody, and stay tuned for our next live discussion. Pending my internet connection can get sorted out. That's why I'm doing a hard segment today, getting this uploaded so you all can hopefully watch without the issue of lag. But that's neither here nor there. Thank you all so much for your continued support. This will mark now the third upcoming hurricane season where we can all grab and come together and rock through it as a community and I can't wait to see what it has in store for us in a positive manner because I know we're all going to stick together through whatever mother nature tries to hurl our way thank you so much for taking some time out of your day once again to join me here on the weather center we'll see you again soon but until next time this is weather center Nazario signing out <laughs>